Hi everybody, Michelle here at Serendipity House. As promised, I am here to um, show you the new IOD stamps and inks. And I've got a lot of cool things here to um, stamp so we can see how, um, how the ink color looks. I've got some um, white uh, towels, so dish towels. I've got a pair of jeans, I have a denim jacket. Um, I have a couple of baby onesies, um, so we're going to be using the ink today and uh, just see how that works out. Say hello when you come on. I'm looking for myself here and then we're going to get started. There I am. Okay. I don't need to hear it. Where are you guys watching from? All right, so I, I am just opening these up actually now. So. Um, um, I'm going to they're all they're all sealed very well so the inks are um, good for shipping Look, nothing's gonna come undone haven't had any problems so far anyways um, so I'm gonna undo there are six new wait I hope I grabbed all of the new colors it looks like huh, hopefully I did there's six new uh, stamps and I'm gonna open those up and show them to you. Do, do any of you have the new stamps yet? Anybody using these yet? This is my first chance to open them up myself so um, and it's hard to see the colors in the bottles but there's a pretty green called new grass um, there is a pretty red called tomato so we'll get these I'll show you how to put them on your ink pads and how to stamp hi Anna hola are you where are you watching from? It's so funny. I'm so I'm in New Hampshire, and I um, before I uh, came to my workshop this morning, I went to get gas, and it's um, a 50, 53 degrees out, a nice fall day, pretty perfect. I love it. I love this weather. Fall is my favorite time of year. I can't get this plastic off. Um, so, anyways, I'm at the gas station, and you can always tell people who aren't from New England. There's a, I'm wearing jeans, a, a sweatshirt, a hoodie, and my flip flops. My flip flops will be on me for a while. There's a woman behind me getting gas who is uh, dressed in head to toe gar winter garb, like totally. She's wearing boots. She's got a turtleneck and a scarf on, and she's standing there going, like she's in the Arctic. And I'm thinking, oh boy, you're gonna have it rough. It's not even cold yet. All right, so uh, the other, we have a mixing white. I'm gonna try to use it as a straight white because I don't have anything to mix in right now, but it's a little bit more um, opaque than the uh, than like a solid white would be, and it's meant so that you can um, mix your own colors, all different shades and colors. And we do have some empty bottles coming, so you can mix your own colors, save the color recipes, and put them right in an empty bottle. Okay, so what we're using today I'm going to show everybody the stamps in a sec. What we're using today are the new inks. Hopefully, boy, I feel like I'm missing one, but we'll work with what we have. Um, I'm going to be working with the ink pad, so I'm not going to be using a brayer. I'm going to show you how to load the pad and then ink right on your stamps. Okay, and then we've got the six new stamps. So um, uh, I'm not going to take them, uh, take them all out of the package, but I'll show you how to use them. We're going to take the ones that we're using out. Uh, this is Bohemia, so th these stamps are nice and big. They're nice big patterns. So this is, um, they're all on a 12 by 12. This one is called Butterflies. Look at how big, you know what, it totally, they, they, this reminds me of, um, and there's wording. Um, I think I am gonna eat this one, so I'm gonna take this one out because I want to show you um, the detail on this that I love because this makes me think of when we were, I don't know if anybody else had to have an insect collection. I don't remember what grade it was, but you see the little words there. But we had to have an insect collection and a specimen collection. And that's what this reminds me of. I remember taking stick pins and putting them through uh, butterflies and insects and putting them on a foam, a piece of foam board. Um, this will be much prettier though than collecting insects. All right, the next one that I think is going to be uh, hugely popular that I like, I'm opening up this one too, um, is 
called Crockery, and um, there are some samples. People have been already doing projects with this that I love, but these are labels like on the old um, crockery jars. Nice. This one's pretty big sized. You can see it like compared to my hand. This one's pretty cool. Ferns. This is another one that of uh, fronds actually, which has ferns. I'm looking for where to open it up. Um, this one I can see really using um, frequently and mixing it in with my transfers. Like if you have a transfer that doesn't quite go all the way to the edge, or you just want to bring it up a little higher, this will be a great thing to layer in. So this is. Do I have it backwards? I want you to be able to see the details, but I'm not sure which direction I'm holding it. And I can see a glare because I'm in front of a window. So these are some nice big fronds. I guess there is no right or wrong way. I'm gonna love these though. I also, I also like to add kind of that wispiness to your project. So if you have the fronds can kind of, you know, bring it off into another direction, depending on what direction you stamp them in. All right, here is one of the double stamps. This is called Lady of Shalop. So there's two of these, which is why um, they're more expensive if you go to look them, look them up. So there's two sheets. So here's one sheet. Look at the size of this flower, you guys. Oh. Next week when we stamp, we're gonna be working on masking. Um, I'm not doing that today on the, on the clothing. I'm just going to make it kind of simple. Um, and this is the sheet number two. So you've got flowers, leaves, stems, um, different shapes of roses. I like these ones right here that are, they always look really pretty tucked in. So that's Lady of Shalott. And then the other um, two part stamp is Havo, which is a beautiful peacock. And I'm thinking maybe trying different ink colors on this guy today and putting it on the back of a, one of the denim jackets I have. So I'm really trying not to catch the glare. So you guys can see this. So there's, so there's two full peacocks so that you can have two um, like facing each other. So they go in two different directions. You see that? All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna move this stuff aside. I'm gonna probably save all my cardboard backing for um, cutting out. I'm just gonna drop it all on the floor for now. Me or alone, whatever. Um, but for cutting out the shapes to do um, masking. Okay. So let's start. Um, I'm not. I'm going to load up my ink pads. I'm not sure what I'm going to stamp first. I'm going to show you how to load up the ink pad. This is the first color. Um, I love this color, so I can't wait to actually see it. It's called Ocean's Deep. So you just take your uh, ink pad and this one must have been one that was opened already. Um, and you just squeeze your ink kind of edge to edge. Now, once you soak your pad, you won't need to keep going back to load it. So, I'm just kind of, I want this all to kind of soak in. So I'm just pushing it in with the head of the, this is really, um, generally, so I, I stamp with ink or I stamp with paint. My general rule of thumb is, um, and I'm not sure why, I guess I could do either, but I, I tend to do ink on fabrics and paint on furniture or craft projects or whatever. All right, I think there's plenty there. Um, I'm gonna clean up around, try not to do around the edge like that. I'm gonna clean up, clean that up because I don't want it to like fall onto a part of my stamp where I don't want it to get. Maybe I should put it upside down while I do another color. I think I'm gonna do that just in case. I'm not sure it's gonna drip, but let's just. No, it's fine, it's not gonna drip. Okay, so that's my 
that's my Oceans Deep. And now I'm going to do uh, the turmeric, which is a yellow. All right. All right. Doesn't come out looking yellow, but. And then I'm just going to rub it so it goes into. might have been a little too much. Well, I, I've got some of these inks, black and um, the China blue inks that I've been using for a really long time. And I, boy, I don't, somebody would have to be stamping a real lot to run out of, run out of these inks. Okay. And I'm going to do one more and then we're going to start stamping. So that's the turmeric. I'm going to let, let that soak in. And then... Or maybe I should do the white too. I'm going to do the green, which is called New Grass. Hey, Deborah, you're, you just got your order? Oh, it must be like Christmas. How do you, what's your favorite stamp that you opened up? Was there anything that you liked more than anything else? What's the first one you're going to use, I should say? Sometimes I, if I really like my stuff, I don't know what it is about it, but I save it and don't use it. Like um, some of the transfers, Midnight Garden was my absolute favorite. And here I am, like I'm a stockist, so I've got plenty of them. But um, I wanted to save it for just the right piece. And I've used it twice now, or three times. Um, but that first time, it's just like, oh, it's so special. I just don't want to actually put it on anything and have it be gone. All right. And the white, just so we can see how opaque it is. Oh, I see. So right off the bat, it's a different consistency. Because it's made for mixing. Okay, I didn't realize that. Now I know. Um... I'm not gonna put it on here. I'm gonna save it for what it's intended for. I don't know. They're all beautiful, they are. Yes, the flowers are so pretty. Hey, Jerry, how are you, honey? Have you used the inks yet? Have you used the mixing white? It's thicker than the other, so I'm not gonna put it on my pad. Um, I do, now this is cross-contamination, but I don't care, because it's just mine. Um, I'm gonna put the tomato on where I just put the white in a board vat. So the tomato is a red and it might get a little lighter where I have the white. All right, and just let that sink into the, there's, the, it's foam, so um, it'll sink right down in there. I'm gonna let it sit there while we decide which stamp to use. I think I'm gonna do one of the towels first since that's kind of the easiest thing to stamp. I'm gonna cap my stamps. So um, I just got some flower sack towels from Amazon. That was the um, the thing that a lot of people have bought so uh, and told me where to get so the other place to get uh, these towels another good place I hear is um, oh where's that place Ikea but we don't have one near us so I did not go to Ikea okay so what I got was just like in a set of 12 there's just flower sack towels Oh, this one looks like it's got a mark on it or something from, not from me, I haven't done anything yet. So, flower sack towel. I've already washed them. I'm not gonna iron them because when they come out, they're gonna have this, uh, you know, this kind of, not wrinkled look, I think it's supposed to be that way, but that's how it's gonna look. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna put the tag at the bottom and how am I gonna do this? I have done this before and nothing has soaked through. So I'm not real worried about anything soaking through, but what I do want is, you know how when you, when you do your towels, you fold them. I wanna make sure I'm in the center of my towel. So I've got a, I just grabbed a, a blank acetate sheet. Hmm. Now I'm dealing with the tag. So that should be the back, two acetate sheets. Okay, 
I'm just doing this for myself because I'm messy that way. So that net, so that I'm finding the center. Okay, and then I'm gonna point the camera down and we're gonna start stamping. What should I stamp on this towel, guys? Which one I've got? Um, should we start with a peacock? Do you think we should start with a peacock? Or is that too confused? I'm probably overthinking this because you know the peacock, when you hang your towel on your stove, you don't, you wanna see the peacock head, you don't wanna see the peacock tail. Yeah, I'm totally overthinking this. And, I'm, and I know this isn't straight, but all right. All right, I am going to Amy, well, we're gonna have to cut up the pieces too. So nobody has any votes. Um, let's try then the shallot first and some ferns. Okay, so when you first use your stamps, this is what you do. The front comes off very easily. I, I save these because I use them again. You need to take a piece of um, a sanding block with a high grit and you need to condition your stamps. So you're just going in one direction. And then I'm going to turn it. I'm going to go in the other direction. And then I'm going to do it to the other one because remember the shallots or shallots. Shallot, but uh, I'm sure that when we watch Josie and Sally say this, Sally will say something like Le Chalot because they're all fancy. So I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, <laughs> but shallots like uh, you buy at the grocery store, except that these are flowers, so they're probably not the same shallots. I'm a little punchy, I guess. All right. That was sliding around a little on me. Usually I do it flat on a table. Okay, let's cut a couple of these out. Um, we're definitely using this big one. All right, so I keep these on the back. There are some of the um, there are some of the stamps that are easier to use if you just cut them out like this and use them on the backing so that you have something to grab onto when you're stamping. Um, there are others that I take off and I will lay out in a sequence. Um, and then use my acetate sheet to pick it up. Um, for example, um, the, the typesetting, the alphabet stamps, you need to cut those all out, obviously, because you're not gonna, you're gonna have them, the letters in different order. So you take, you pull those off of the sheet as opposed to cutting them out like this and keeping them on the back. That's what I do with that. Um, the other one I do that with is birds, branches, and blossoms because I'm always rearranging the order of where those go. Uh, sometimes in a you know in a long format, so I like to have them the back cling onto a new acetate sheet in the design that I want. Okay. So, what does everybody have fall decor out? Well, I'm cutting these out. Talk to me. Talk to me, white pumpkins or orange pumpkins? What is your preference? I am really liking the look of white pumpkins. I haven't gotten mine yet. I've already got um, four mums on my front porch that have died because they weren't soaking water up. So I'm on round two of fall decor at my house. Um, and I think like last year I got um, white pumpkins and also um, the farm stand near us has really cool colored um, gourds that are just all different colors but like really pretty muted really pretty muted colors like in blues and in greens with all of these you know funky wart looking things on them and weird shapes and i love mixing those in with um just their traditional round pumpkins all of which last year I got, none of them were orange. And I'm kind of feeling the same this year. So white pumpkins this year, Carrie, I um, I think they're just refreshing. I guess I get, I just get sick of the same thing. All right, I'm gonna cut all of these out so that we can pick from them. I'm on number two. 
doesn't take that long. Um, I don't do any of the other stuff. I used to do hay bales, like when my kids were younger, I used to do hay bales and um, corn stock, but um, I don't do that now. It, sometimes it just feels like it's more stuff to pick up that gets blown around. All right, I am going to hold off on the leaves. I'll cut them if I want them. And I'm gonna cut off the roses. You can't get white pumpkins in the UK? Really? Interesting. I wonder why that is. You know, I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention or if they're like a newer thing here because I don't remember really seeing them other than maybe in some magazines. They weren't something that was um, easy to find or like at our grocery store or farm stands until the last few years. I mean, now even the grocery stores have them. So, so maybe, maybe they're coming your way. Sometimes things are just slow. All right, here we go. I could have had all this done beforehand, but um, I'm sorry that I didn't. I will, I'm gonna be making, doing something shorter that's just a quick, I think a fast forward sample of all of this stuff because um, people seem to like <laughs> videos that are on fast forward. Because who has time for this, you know? But I also haven't been on since last Friday, so I thought maybe some people would stop in. Oh, you can't get the stamps. I thought you were talking about white pumpkins. You can get the stamps in the UK. We have um, a lot of retailers there. Um, others of us ship there, although it'd be a lot cheaper for you just to buy them there. Um, we in the States just received ours though this week. Um, what's today's Friday. I got mine on Monday and I got my inks on Tuesday. So it's gonna take a little bit longer to get there. That's all, but it will get there. Okay, here we go. I am going to aim the camera down and we are going to do some stamping. All right. Now, because everything's white, I have to wait for the, um, this is my towel fold and I'm just gonna wait a second for the delay here. I'm not sure if I'm moving in the opposite direction or the correct direction. Oh, that was be the opposite direction. Okay. I think I think I got it. So I'm stamping down here and I'm going to work my way up. Sorry guys. I have my light on my camera so low, and the reason why is because once during live, when I had my light up really high, uh, all of a sudden I my battery went and I was done. Okay, so it seems as if we should start with the f uh, first biggest stamp. What color, what color? Or should we do more of the little ones? See, I don't see me doing these sta these really huge stamps right away on the on my denim. So let's do. I got this awful juicy. Let's do the tomato. And normally you'd press down a little more, a little extra. But look, I put. I think I overloaded the ink on this. Okay, so the ink is um, fade resistant, it is permanent ink. Um, I need, the last time I inked a pair of jeans and gave them to a friend, apparently I have to ask her how she was washing them. This is taking longer than usual, but I can see how wet I have this. But anyway, she is telling me that it faded and so I'll have to see how she's washing it and then I'm gonna hold on to these uh, denim ones that I stamp today. 
once that is even on my pad, I'm not gonna worry as much about. Okay, so here we go. The only thing you need to remember with this always is that um, once you have it down, you have committed. And so you can't wiggle it or you're gonna get a blurry image. All right, I'm gonna offset it and kind of have it going off the bottom here. Drop it. Just make sure you don't have a, okay, here we go. Ooh, I can't wait to see. I don't think I've ever used a stamp this big. Now with paint, I'm more careful, uh, you know, to hit it so much, but because I'm going onto a porous cloth, I want to really make sure it's contact and I'm not worried about it smudging or getting like um, blurry because I think it's going to soak right in. Are we ready? Ooh, look at the detail. That is very pretty. Very pretty. Let's do another one. Let's do another one in the same color. Now I can go a little faster. Try not to get it on my... I was worried about it being too juicy the first time. That's why I wasn't going real fast, but I think this is uh, not a problem. And this is where masking would come in handy. Where's one of those thin ones that I was going to, uh, we're gonna do some, uh, should have um... all right so I'm masking this off it's not going to be perfect because obviously I'm not doing it with a stamp right off but let's see so that is going to make it so it looks like it's going behind the other one you'll see when I take it off get all the ink on there so this is kind of like a russet color funny how it looks different in pictures and but I can change it and make it pink I could make it lighter I could make it darker see what that did now I'm not going to go into masking now um, but I do have some oh that's so pretty I like to do in threes but the masking is when you're covering up parts so you can get depth in your art uh, and to do that you have to cut out on cardboard or plastic all of these shapes uh, and so I'm gonna do that off camera sometimes so I have the masks ready okay I like to do in three so we're oh there we go are you going to masking um, I'm not doing that now because I took a whole bunch of time up cutting these out and showing these um, and in order to mask you have to cut every single one out so Let's see, how about that one right there? I know I'm using all the same color ink here. Should we have that one be yellow? I'm not sure what shade of yellow it's gonna be. Let's do this one in yellow. And we could see what it looks like. I can show you quick how to do the masking. But I thought it might be more fun to maybe do some jeans, like stamp a whole bunch of things. What do you think? There's only five of you on here watching, so I really will do whatever you want. All right, so we're going to go for yellow rose. Whoa. It would be just like me to drop this. Now, if I put them up here, let's see, when you fold your towel, there's the crease. And then we could work some stems in. And then I'm going to do a test on washing this at my house. And um, I'm going to get it, hit it with a hot iron after 24 hours. And then, oh, that's so pretty. All right, let's do some, 
Let's do some stems. All right. Here's one of the stems. Well, actually, I just, I can't, like, just do that. Let's do another one of these. Let's do this little one. Let's see. I'm going to get the top with the yellow. And then I'm going to get the bottom with the green. And then I'm going to wipe off where I just made the mess on the because I don't want to accidentally get this on my towel. And then... Ooh. Love it. Let's do a red one on the top. I'm gonna put a little more green on the bottom here. It's kind of sharp. I'm gonna do one more of those up there. What do you think? Oh, I love it. It's pretty easy to do it this way too, actually. Other than the fact that I'm making a bit of a mess in my hands. But I did put an apron on today. And I don't always do that. Beautiful. For, you know what? My comments are not scrolling up. I just realized that. Hi, Betty. Thanks for coming. These are, uh, shoot, I looked away. Look what I did. Um, these are IOD ink pads. Do you think I should stamp more before I do the stems? Um, let's see. These are IOD ink pads. So... They're foam with the IOD, and I'm using the new IOD inks, and Lady of Shalott is the stamp I'm using. Let's see. This is my first time getting these stamps out, so. Okay, that was a little bit of a smudge. Uh, what else do I, oh, these came in there too. I could do these in blue or am I getting a little too colorful? What do you think, guys? I guess since this is a test one for me, I'm totally fine. Because I'm gonna play around with how it wears in the wash. Let's do, see this is where the masking would look really good. All right, work, give me a, I'm gonna do what I always do and just kind of play it by ear. So I'm gonna use this to just do kind of like a messy masking here. Can you guys see this far over? Okay. Do one more of those, and I'm gonna not do the green on the bottom because I'm gonna. Whoops, keep moving it with my shirt here. see what happens when can you guys see this little shadow there that's why these should get wiped off I missed that one I'm just kind of trying to go a little too fast here um, let's see let's bring some of these stems would be coming out down here This one maybe down here. This one. All right. 
I gotta have three of those. I gotta do my rule of three. Um, I feel like it's gonna go up there. It is gonna go up there. And same problem on the same stamp again. I don't know what it is with this one. Maybe it's just because I'm pressing down on the bottom there. But I think it's looking good and it certainly is something I could lose myself in for a long time. Stem go down. There. What do you think? I think that looks bravo pretty. All right, I think that I'm going to just see how it looks on a pair of jeans with the peacock. What do you think? What time is it? Okay, let's do a pair of jeans with the peacock. Here's the towel. Let's see, I'm gonna take that sheet out. And so I'm gonna wait 24 hours before I wash it. I mean, before I heat set it, and then I'm going to um, give it another few days and then wash it. Okay, let's do without getting this all messy. The colors are definitely vibrant, but they show up differently on, or actually I have a light color jacket. Let's take this light color jacket. This is what I, and put a peacock on the back. This is what I wanted to. Do you think of all the things that I have a peacock as, Peacock is the good is a good idea for this. I do not want to get anything else on it because I would like to sell this. This is not my size or anything. So let's center it. Let's first unbutton it. I'm surprised at how expensive um, things are at the secondhand store, like a used denim jacket. Crazy. Much more expensive than I would have thought before I went in to the store, that's for sure. Okay, so yeah, so I think Peacock right here, that's what I'm gonna do. All right. So we're gonna... Where's my sandpaper? I am going to go. So this just, Kind of helps get the factory finish off or whatever and helps you helps it grab helps the anchor your paint grab I think my paper is probably like 220 or something so if you ever hear anybody say condition your stamp that's what they mean. Okay, I am going to start with the, ouch, ow, with the top. So I am going to cut Oh, just having this sit on the jacket, I can already tell I'm going to love it. Oh my gosh. Now I don't know about having the peacock come around the front, or maybe that's where I can grab some feathers. I'm trying to think if I have any feather molds. I'm trying to think if the indie, if the indie, not mold, but um, stamp. Does the indie stamp have feathers? I've never used that one. All right, this is gonna be fabulous. Let's take off these sharp edges so I don't injure myself. 
All right. Just put down. I gotta move the flowers out of the way. I'm gonna start mixing these up. And I'm gonna start putting flowers in as feathers. All right, and then the other one. Well, I visually I'm thinking it should go right into this back thing, but then I won't have enough room. So maybe it should go outside of that. What do you think? You guys think I can go? Do you guys think I can go outside of the stitching on this and just kind of freehand it? I think I want to so that I can get a whole peacock on there, or at least closer to the to a whole one. That's my plan then. Yeah. It still won't fit a whole one, but it'll come close. I can I can just keep building up the feathers. Alright, bear with me because I I wasn't sure. I wanted to show you guys the full sheets and I wasn't sure what I was gonna stamp. This is turning into a long one. Arting in real time, that's what it is. And I'm gonna try to mix the ink because you know the eyes are the feathers. This is where mixing would be good, but I don't have any cups. So you mix your ink and you put it in little cups. I don't think I've got anything to mix colors. Maybe I could do it, oh, if I did it on a plate. See, I'm so messy that I don't dare doing things like that. I will totally get, I will totally get ink everywhere if I do that. Cutting off the corners. Some of these are uh, very tight together, so you have to be careful when you're cutting them out. All right, let's lay out our design then. Yeah, sticky. Okay, so we're gonna lay it face down, so. Peacock head can come up to the shoulder. And where are my nice long fronds? Hmm. I'm not sure which way would be, which way is like the natural, I should have looked. I should have looked at peacock pictures. It did not cross my mind. Anybody? 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 Maybe I use the same one a couple times here. Which way looks more natural? I'm gonna use it upside down. Only a real peacock, peacock fanatic would know though, right? Nobody? All right, let's do the top of the peacock. All right, he's gonna be blue. Okay, and then just to see what happens here, I am gonna put a little bit of green on here. A little bit of yellow. No idea what's going to happen, you guys. I just, I've never stamped with color variations like this. I'm just playing. So let's see. Let's get this off of there. All right, hopefully it's juicy enough. and drop it. Cross 
probably after I get this part up, I am going to go look up the way the tail feathers, feathers go so I get this on right. And then come back with a finished project. I wanna make sure it gets every detail because it's soaking right into the fabric. Ooh, look how that came out. That is so cool, you guys. Taking the... All right. Am I, uh, I can't see. Uh, rotate your phone. Look at that. Sorry for losing you, but isn't that cool? That came out really cool. Um, some black in there actually might not have been bad either. I know this is very wrinkled, but it was not wrinkled enough that I couldn't have uh, gotten my... All right, now... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, keep, I keep going blank upside down. Okay, um, I'm going to finish this way. I really want to get my tail feathers right. I'm not sure if they go you know, which direction they're supposed to swoop in. And I hadn't, hadn't thought about it until I just went to stamp it. So um, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, this was a little long and tedious because I had to cut out. Um, I'm going to do something quicker with just kind of the bullet points uh, to this so you can see, uh, you know, have something quicker to reference. Uh, if you're looking for any of this, I am stocked at serendipity.house and they will be in um, Peterborough and Bowerbird next week. I'm, I've got another shipment coming on Monday, so the rest of them will be there this week. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.